Okay, so let's start the process for creating different kinds of tiles in our game. So to create the different tiles, we'll have to create prefabs for every single tile that we already have. So we have to go to the prefab folder. As you can see here, we already have the grass zero one, but we also need to add the other ones. So go to the sprites folder and find the tiles. And then here, you just need to take each and every one of your tiles and drag them into the scene. Maybe you don't have these this many tiles in your game. Uh, maybe you only have one, maybe you only have two. So you just need to drag every single tile that you have um, into the hierarchy here, like I do here, so that you create a game object of each of any one, every one of them. When you have created a, a game object for all your tiles, go to the prefab folder and then take each of the tiles and drag them into the prefab folder uh, one by one, like so so that you actually create a prefab from every single tile that you have in the game. And you can simply delete the other tiles from um, from the hierarchy here. So now that we have the prefabs, we'll have to make sure that the level manager knows how to handle more uh, more tiles. So we can open up our scripts, level manager script here. And then we have to change our um, game object uh, tile here to an array of game objects. And if you don't know, then an array is um, a variable that can contain more data than just uh, one simple uh, game object, for example. So if we create a, an array of objects, it's like um, lots of variables in one or some, so to say. So we can create an array of game objects and let's call it tile prefabs. And down here, we also need to replace the tile with tile prefabs. And to access something in an array, we need to use the indexer. And we're simply going to use the tile on position zero, the first position, and use the tiles as a tile as a reference for uh, generating or calculating the the size of the of the actual tile. So all our tiles are the same size in this game. So it doesn't matter if we pick the first one because the first one has the correct size and the rest should have the same size. So we can just use the first tile to calculate the bounds of the of the rectangle. So now we have our tile prefabs. If we save this and jump into Unity and click your level manager, um, there is a compiler error. Let's see, the name tile does not exist yet. So down here, where in our place tile function, we're still using tile instead of tile prefabs. So you need to take tile and replace it with tile prefabs and then just take the first tile here. So now it will just place the first tile in our game no matter what. So let's try to save this. And if we jump in here and open up, um, I click on the level manager, open up the, the array here. Then you'll see there's a size of zero and we need to make the array the same size as the amount of tiles we have. So if we go to the prefab folder, you'll see we have six tiles. So we need to make sure that the size is six. And take note here, if you don't know arrays, the first element in the array is called zero. So the first index is zero. One, two, three, four, five. So even though we have six elements in our array, the largest value here is five because zero is also counted in. Then you need to take every single tile from the prefab folder and just drag it into um, the, the, the tile array here. And we go to this one, and this one, and this one. So now we have created an array with all the tiles that we have in our game. So now we can start using them in our level manager. So to do so, we will have to, um, we will have to actually change a little around in our create level function. But we can actually just test that this out if it works. So if you, for example, replaces the zero with a four or something inside the place tile and save, then you should see some other tiles being placed now. And as you can see now, it places sand instead. And you can go back in and you can change it to free or something. Then you place some kind of grass. And there you see. So now we can decide what kind of tiles that we place. And I can see my tiles are a little off. Um, they're not placed in the top left corner. So I guess I didn't manage to save the fact or sa save the pivot point for the tiles. So I need to go to sprites, tiles, select all the sprites, 
set the pivot to top left apply and then I'll, I'm simply going to save the project here let's see yeah so now they they fit in the top left corner as they should okay so now we can spawn different tiles but we need to make this code a little nicer or a little more neat so it's easier for us to generate a level with different tiles in it because now we can only spawn one kind of tile um, um, over the whole level but we'll need to differ these tiles if we want to make a path and so on and to do this we will have to use a string array so we need to go to the create level function and up here we'll have to create a new string array called map data so write string and the square brackets and write map data and then we can write it instantiate it as a new string array so and then we can add some content to this string array so right now we are going to create a string array um, with all the data for the map but we are going to move the instantiation of this string array to a text document later because we're going to have some very very long strings in here if we keep um, defining our map like this um, so this is just for testing and later we're going to move it to the text document to make it easier for us to get an overview of what's actually in the map but we can add some different um, tiles here let's say that we want a row of each kind of tile so that we can test that everything works so the first row will need to be zero so we're going to make four tiles and comma one and remember all of them needs to be four and comma three and four and five so now we have created a, st a string array with a line of zeros ones two three and four and fives Right, so we can use this code to actually place our tiles in the game. As you can see here, these are strings. And right now we're using an integer down here to place our tile. So we have to do something so that we can actually use the strings to place the tiles in, in our game. So let's do that. In the place tile function, we can write a string tile type and we can use this tile type down here to instantiate our our tiles so first of all we need to make an integer called tile index and this tile index we need to pass into an int dot pass and that's the tile type okay so what's happening here this tile type is going to be read from our text document that's exactly why I'm going to use a string because we're going to use a text document to define the level else I would just use an integer right away so this tile type could come in as this so this might be what this one is equal to this is just like an example so we get a string like this and this line of code here takes this and makes it equal to this so it makes it into a number right we pass the string to a number so that we can store it in the int integer here and then we use the integer down here so we say tile index here so now our function is ready to take the actual string transform it into or translate it into an integer and use that integer to place the tile in the game so as you can see here it is complaining up here so we could actually just copy and say to place tile zero as a string and if we save this and go back to unity and run it then it's going to place tile zero everywhere and if I would go in here and change this one to five for example save well then it will place, pay, place sand everywhere so now the function can actually take a string and this is strings so this is exactly what we needed to do okay so now we need to use this map data array to define our level so first of all we need to know how large uh, it needs to be so we can make an integer called uh, map um, let's, let's call it map x size an integer called map y size okay so the x size is equal to map data position zero dot um, two char array 
down to length. There we go. Okay. So what does this do? Well, the map size x, we, we are going to have the same amount of rows on every single uh, line in our game so that we don't get lines that looks like this. Let's see if we run the game right. We don't get any lines that looks like this because it doesn't make any sense in, in its how defense tile map to have some tiles without anything on it. So just to make sure that everything, every line has the same length, we're simply going to make sure that our when we define our map that everything has the same length. That's why we have used four numbers on every single position here. Because I know there is four numbers on every single position, well, then I can just take map data position zero, which is this one, take the length of that position, which is four, one, two, three, four, that's four zeros, and save that in here. So now I have stored my x value, my x size, which is four. So now I know how many um, tiles I need to place out on the x-axis. Then I need to store the y value, and the y value is equal to each and every one of these. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to make sure that the y value is six, so I know how many rows I need to make. And I can do that by saying map data dot length because the length of this array here is equal to six because there's six entries in, <laughs> entries here with numbers. So now I have the X size and the Y size. So now I can start using this down here because if I say map size that Y up here and map size that X down here, then I'm actually using map size dot but I mean map y size and map x size um, then I can actually place the right amount of tiles actually I'm going to rename this to uh, map x and map y just to make it easier so now I can actually place the correct number of tiles let's try here there we go so that's four by six right and that's correct because we have four in each every, and every one of these, and there is six all in all on the Y. So now we have the right size. Now we need to use the right tile, because right now we're just placing the same tile down here because we're using five. So we need to say, we need somehow to store the type of tile. And we could do that in a char array. So we say char, hurry. Let's call it horizontal wisely. Let's call it new tiles. Is equal to map data. Um, y to char array. Okay, so what did we just do? Well, we took every single um, string or every single character in the string and saved in a char array. So first time it runs, it takes this string here and divides the zeros like this, right, into chars like so, all the way down. Don't even need to do this, but, so it divides it into this, and throws it into this char array, and then we can use this char array because we have every single line, uh, every single letter alone here, and we can use that to place the chars or the tiles in the game world. So down here, we can just say, new tiles, x um, to string. So we take every single number, puts it into a char array. We run through, we run through that char array by going new tiles dot x, which is the positions of first time is zero, next time is one, next time is two, last time is three of indexes. And it uses that number and passes it down to the place tile and it translates everything and places it in the world. So let's try to save this. And now you can see we are placing one of each type of tile here in our game world. So now we know that the functionality for placing the tiles works. So now we can place different tiles. Um, I think I'm going to end this video here. It's running a little long. Um, so in the next video, we will try to take this functionality here 
and move it from the code here into a text document and then load the text document in here and use that text document down here to create the correct tile level uh, tile map so thank you very much for watching and remember that in scope studios is a community found page so all your support is very important to me you can support me in different ways for example you can go to the patreon page where you can support me by five dollars and then get all my tutorial projects in return that means all my sprites all my assets and everything that is included in every single tutorial you can also support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product and you can do that by clicking the link in the bottom of the screen again thank you very much for watching